fourth, uh, 2014 to order and, and uh, invite you to join with us in the salute to the flag. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways you may exit the chambers. To my left is to exit through the council chamber doors, turn left, walk down one flight of stairs, and outside of the building. Or perhaps the best way is to exit through the rear of the chambers. In either case, once you're outside of the building, please walk a safe distance away from the building. Will the secretary please take the roll? Charles Duran. Present. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Peter Falk. Here. Kathleen Sarno. Here. Lori Longhi. Here. Nicholas Spakus. Charles Ladd. Here. Donald Gregory. Alan Drinan. Dominic Galimo. Six present. Mm. We have nobody. Six. All right. Uh, approval of minutes for July 31st, 2014. Uh, there's, to me, uh, well, there's no motion on the floor. No. Um, can I just make a motion that we table the minutes and go into discussion about them? The motion to table is no discussion. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve. Second. The motion made to approve. July uh, 31st? July yes. 31st, right. Well, I went through them and I, I know I've had calls on it. There's nothing on the space measurements that I felt was critical to the uh, reasons that we turned down and to me the minutes for what it would have been possible court case were very very poor and again it just calls that we we need a, a secretary in attendance here somebody else listening to a report i don't know if they can figure out what's important or what's not important right but that's my opinion on these and i i would it would entertain a motion to table when you're finished discussing these okay well, I, I think we've said that a number of times that we feel that we should have somebody here just for that reason uh, I, I agree i thought the minutes were very scant in the areas that we really needed to be clear and concise there was things that were actually changed which i felt changed the context of what was said, said. And as an example um, uh, of the minutes, it said on um, page 14, and I won't go through the many of them that I found, but it said, Chairman Duran stated that it took a long while to get such a good plan. When I went back to the tape, because I was sitting next to Charlie and I didn't think that that's what he said, it said, Chairman Duran stated that it took a long while to get to this point where we almost have a good plan. So that totally changes what he had said. And then I found um, there were just loads of errors that I kind of highlighted sections where I talked about ADA compliant. They had 80, the, the number 80A. So they didn't even understand that it was ADA because we were talking about handicapped yeah, that's stuff. That's on page nine. Mm -hmm. And it's on everywhere in the entire thing. Oh, I just caught it yeah. once. Yeah. So I think that we need to have like these areas and I'd be happy to give like some of the areas that I hand wrote where I knew that there were changes, but I didn't know. It seemed as though for such a long hearing and so much detail mm -hmm. that we only had 15 pages of minutes. Commissioner Drynan told me that he also found problems with it and uh, he suggested that we you have a disc or mailed it sent in a disc of some transcription he made yes mr. Drynan did our uh, commissioner Drynan did send a uh, a burned CD of the um, the ETV um, and sent it to us um, at this time uh, 
we don't have a recording secretary. I know, and, it's, it's apparent. I know. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to get one. So it's, this may be the best that we get that we have for a while. Well, either that or legal fees are going to pay for. Well, the thing that I, I felt not good. I'm not paid. I'm a volunteer, and to sit there and for me to have to go through the DVD and to compare what's on the minutes and spend two or three hours going through them doesn't seem to be fair to people that are volunteering their time. And I mean, like, I knew that I sat in the hearing and when things didn't make sense to me, I started going back to them and found out that they, they were summarizing to the point where they changed what was being said. The and that's a problem. Of what was said. Okay, so. <clears throat> it's not fair to the town. It really either as far as records but but again we're we're in the position where we don't have one and for the foreseeable future this is the the way that it's going to work so all i can say is make notations um areas but that you see that are I, wrong and we'll have to over, address it with the service it's been quite a while what is it two years now or we've been operating no, well, with this system, but we've had others. We had some in temporary secretaries that were here a week or two at a time. So we've been without a permanent person for quite a while. And just to be fair, I mean, honestly, it's Peter, not an easy job watching Rachel trying to do the meeting and see who made the motions and to get everything down, it, it's, it's a ton of work for the person sitting in that spot, too. I understand. And it's like it's almost like you need a sidekick or somebody else, even if it's another staff person. It seems as though it's a lot. And even when we go through all the conditions, she would sit there with a book and she's writing them down. And then she has to read them back and has to still conduct the meeting. It's it's really a difficult thing. To be fair, it's just it's a problem. And there was just so much missing. And in this particular hearing, that was pertinent if there was an appeal but not only that for somebody that ever wanted to come back in and do the similar type thing if half the stuff is missing they don't know really what happened in the meeting and so al did make a suggestion that after all the meetings that we should have something that says these are recorded and you can view them somewhere else so that if some other applicant does come in that they they realize if you're not from this town you might not know that they're on tv Right. But if an appeal, I don't know if a judge would accept the disc or want to sit there and listen to the thing because it would be the whole meeting. So I, Obviously, I, I mean, not an attorney, absolutely, but. it's something that needs to be, you know, considered and worked out. Well, we've right. asked for it, but okay. So we'll make a motion to table, and I would suggest if everyone has their little notes, they can submit them and see if we can get motion them fixed. To table. Second. Second. Motion to table. Motion to table. Second. Second. Do you want to do a roll call? Roll it loud. Yes, there's no secretary. Okay. Charles Durant. For the table. Elizabeth Ballard. For. Peter Falk. For. Kathleen Sarno. For the table. Lori Longy. For the table. Nicholas Afakis. For the table. Charles Ladd. For the table. Okay. Seven for the table. That's motions to ta are tabled. Town attorney is in uh, writing. And any questions for the town attorney through Peter, I guess. Or Courtney's here. Mm, yep. The brief I see for villages is September 15th. The capital region is uh, October 10th. And uh, the GN properties is the fifth, December fifth, I guess. Uh -huh. November fifth and December fifth. We'll be very busy. <laughs> okay, uh, zoning enforcement supervisor, she's not here. Uh, we need on the next agenda to. Uh, it has been suggested we change our. A, uh, a gender write-up, which would be as in the bylaws, and I believe we'd have to change the bylaws because uh, it's been suggested and sort of frustrating in, in some areas that uh, 
we don't get notification. I asked last time that when a, when a person sign, uh, calls in with a problem that they get notified, and we never find out until we get a release of what's happened to it, if it happens to get on there. Uh, for example, I think for over a while we've been talking about an electronic sign and we can't find out what's going on with it. So what we, uh, what's been suggested is that under correspondence is we start listing the ones that commissioners have inqu inquired about and until they're taken care of or we get a, a, an answer on, uh, we're, we're thinking about doing that. Well, so. let me just say, say this, that um, the, the work of the, of the ZEO, the Zoning Enforcement Officer, the daily work of the ZEO is directed by Courtney, and she reports to Courtney. So, well, I hate to say it, but the regulations say she, she works reports under us. Our, our, and if it, well, it, it's if you're not satisfied, when councilman calls in to the to the manager, they get an answer. We call in and. We're lucky if we find out anything. Now, oh, if you're I, not I like, are you not satisfied with the report? Some of them yes. aren't even on there. That, you know, well, right. well they, they can at least, I'll go back to uh, a, a former CEO. I used to, get, if I called in, I would get not only a letter of what came from what he did, but I'd get a phone call prior. This, this goes back, and this, this carried through to the next one. Uh -huh. So it's worked, but, but and again, with staff shortage, uh, things have just slid. And if I get a complaint, as a councilman gets a complaint, that something is going on or something's wrong and I call it in, I get called back by this person. And, and what do I do? Say, I don't know? Right. Well, there is a way a way to resolve that, and that would be to use the the click, the C click fix system. That doesn't work either. I'll tell you why later, but I won't do it now. Well, that that way it's recorded. Yeah, and I know. Know what happened? It's yeah, I know. So it just disappears off the screen, uh, on some cases. What? So you're suggesting? I guess this is going to be interesting. So we go and find 15 siding violations. We go on and see, click, fix it. And then it gets addressed. But if we send an email to the zoning enforcement officer who's supposed to report basically to us, we can't get anything done. So we have to. Well, you know, I was going to say we appoint the zoning enforcement officer. Can we appoint somebody we can else? Point the yeah. The zoning enforcement officer, too. Well, I, I mean, know you, don't you don't want to you know, know come you push report. and shove. Let's work together. It's you know, but but, but you just you you made a comment about the lack of of staffing and and yes, there is how much problem there are with trying to get work done. And in the same breath, you're saying I want to know every single detail mm -hmm. of no, what's I'm going not saying on. Every not, single detail. But what we're saying is, is we're getting complaints from the public. We sit on this board. We're the face of the public. So when we get complaints and people are saying, oh, there's signs all over town. So now we're starting to be a little bit more wary about the signs. And I did one day drive out and I saw a load of them. Yep. So I gave a list of the signs just so, to see if they would get addressed. I think Al did the same. Al did the same. It was a matter of, you know, people tend to look at this board and think that this is what our board represents. Just like if I have a different complaint, I would go to my council person. That's right. So, but if I go to the council person, the council person goes to Matt and, it, and obviously it gets done, it gets addressed. We never hear anything either way. It's the same relationship. You should be coming to me, now it would be me, and then I would direct the staff, these items need to be addressed. Yeah, that's, well, at least get an answer. That but we did an do that through Rachel uh, this summer. Before right. Rachel, I would think they would come to you to tell you what need, what we, whatever reason we called or emailed, rather than us go to you and then you go yeah, to that's, them. That's, that's a roundabout way. Right. Well, yeah, it is. Room. I mean, but are you talking about residents? 
Oh, you're talking about staff. So I'm talking staff. about staff, right? And in, in us, the you know the right. P and Z residents. I agree should use that probably through through the internet. But I think we should be able to call the CEO if there's a problem. A lot of folks either don't want to use it or aren't aware of it or they just shy away from it. They they're, they're comfortable telling you because they know you or whatever. Well, I've heard complaints and it, it, it's and so disappeared off the slate. But that people have it is a lot easier just to call her than to go on to the inter. You know, and 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 I think we should have a little bit more leeway than the, the you know the, the regular public has. And we don't want to call you. I mean, I think you know you're much too busy for for phone calls like that. And you would think the CEO would go to you. We'd go to him or her, and then they'd go to you and I, say. I don't see why we yeah. should even ask. It should be just a, a courtesy that if a, a, a citizen calls one of us, that we can be able to get an answer without waiting two weeks to to get that. You know, I, I know that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've, I've quoted that several times. It's, but it, that's that's all. Okay. You know, it, so it, it, the CEO can't pick up the phone and call us and said, "I received your complaint. This is what I'm doing," and uh, that's what's been done in the past. And then, if there's a solution to it and says, "This is what I did," then fine. That's all you need. All that she needs to do. Yeah, it's another five minutes, maybe. But then I can get back to the citizens and say it's taken care of, or if they call me because they don't see it's taken care of, I don't have an answer. Uh -huh. Because there have so been. So the zoning enforcement officer and supervisor report directly to me, and my expectation would be that they have a level of customer service across the board and for commissioners and council members and any of us. Um, so I would you know I would expect that to be done so if that's not being met I need to know about it and we can address it that way thank you okay okay uh, okay okay but anyhow that, that's <laughs> then uh, we, we do have to I've been asked to put it on for the agenda for next next time is a discussion on the uh, bylaws. Right. Okay. Some of them want to ch want to change it. There was another. And the bylaws specifically. Of, of the operation of the of the of this commission, right? Uh huh. So that we can add these specific things to our bylaws. And you would ask for that previously? What? Did you ask for change no, I'm just it? saying for the next no, agenda. Yeah. Is you would like it on the agenda. I got it. Uh, okay. For the, the very next agenda is under items for discussion. Or, well, okay. uh, well, yeah, the other, other business is, is discussion of the bylaws. Okay, going on. Can I just mention one yes. thing? On herds, we just got the zoning um, update tonight, which I don't know why it wasn't in our packet, but that's happened several times. So if we could, if we get this, at least we can go through it and look at it and see if the things that we brought up were adjust. But on the blight report that came in our packet, it was so scrambled up that all like hers she has lines yeah and some of them have highlights so you could read mm -hmm. i literally had to start drawing my own lines to figure out what was going on and and we really don't know it's like it just says open closed it doesn't say really what's going on with it the blight report was not as good as she needs space between the items because some of the items run into I mean, the yeah, next item. Items. Exactly. And it was like a formatting error, I think, problem. They were just really hard to read. Yeah, can she format it like this? Yeah, I mean, this one was nice. Is it required that you get uh, a blight report? We always have got a re blight report. I don't report. know it's not in writing anywhere, but we've, uh, we've asked for it and we have it. Because again, uh, 
prior to bright officers most of the blight complaints came through us us p and z anyway and now with the blight now with the blight officers being on board do you still feel it's necessary to get those reports yes oh. we feel it's necessary because a lot of the complaints that we get are still no right whether it's sign blight or what kind of blight it still blight. comes through here through right like PNC. one of the things that I saw specifically was the old Rockville blank bank had a buffer area and they mowed the um, the bank and somebody said to me did you look at the buffer area it's not mowed so I turned that into Tracy but that's really blight it's not zoning violation it's a blight issue yeah, no, right so we, the blight, or bright blight historically came through us well, no matter what kind of blight it was. And so we, when it started, we asked for the reports, and Jose was, got them for us. Uh-huh. You know, in, in my district, uh, a lot of the people are thinking the blight treatment is just a bunch of mirrors because they don't ever see anything accomplished on it. People complain to me, what are they doing? But you could have them call the blight officers and they could explain the process, which as is, an you, example, as you know, takes a, a very long time. Yeah, I will say I've seen as the legal example, ads. That school uh, street structure, mm -hmm. right. they're still listing it owned by a person that's been through four banks in the last two years. I know that, so why doesn't the blight people know that? And, and Charlie's brought it up at, at the, in, in this meeting, like... <laughs> Several hundred times. <laughs> Every meeting. Nobody, everybody still thinks this, this guy owns it. Well, has anyone, not, not, I'm not putting it on you, but. Charlie talked to the congressman about it, too. To the who? Did you talk to the blight officers personally? No. I, okay. So if we don't know about it, meaning if I don't know about it, or Peter doesn't know about it, or Tracy doesn't know about staff. it, or the blight enforcement officers don't know about it. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, uh, we do our best through the C-Click Fix system and complaints that come in. That is how they the generate their door. workload. Say that again. See, in that particular structure, the mowing gets done by the guy next door. Otherwise, it would be up past the windows. Uh, okay. I'm writing down School Street ownership. I will find out tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay, Any, anything further on the blight uh, zoning enforcement supervisor or blight? Okay, community development. Director. Oh, this was Let that. me start by saying that, as you kind of figured out now, Peter is our community development director and is going to be acting as interim planner while we get the position filled. And so um, I, have a, I have a few things. Um, to go over um, the first is in I believe this is in your folder this is the uh, the training for right. the land use Academy um, as of today we had one uh, B and Z member um, signed up for this training which is Charlie Ladd right but how could we do Thursday, it the September 11th is, is our planning meeting. Yeah. Oh, My I, understanding was that this was in lieu of the workshop and that that was explained in the email. No. No. That was intended to be explained no. in the email, so apologies. It was a choice, so we all figured that it was more important to the workshop. No, the, Absolutely. We canceled the workshop so that you could attend. Well, that's news to me. <laughs> uh, because that workshop, I thought it was considered very important. And yeah, I to, wanted to go, too. You can still go. So let me say apologies. I thought that that message had been relayed to you all through the through who? planning secretary. Through if Barbara. it did not, that is, I will take responsibility no, for that. I apologize, got, we, and we strongly got, encourage you to attend. We moved it. some things that we all had talked about doing in the workshop purposely so that you all could though. attend. So please consider continuing to go because well, it is still open. we have a new date for open. the workshop, Courtney? We can do uh, a workshop. We just thought September was very full with the two meetings and then the two trainings. But we could certainly add another workshop date in September if you'd like. And we certainly have October I workshop October. scheduled. October. October. Okay. We got to add on a Thursday because I don't have any Thursdays free. <laughs> Well, you filled them all up for me. <laughs> I will go to the that one. I definitely would go to the. I wanted to go, but I f was making a choice. 
Oh, okay. I don't even need you. I'll go with you. You want to go? I'll sure. So Liz is coming too. With the Bobsy twins, we'll go. The, okay. The second. Any other questions about the training? <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go too. <laughs> <laughs> that makes three ladies. <laughs> no men, huh? Oh, I got. I can't lose so Eleven. The second item um, is as in reference to um, Mayfield Place. Um, you may have noticed in your um, folder that there's a, there's a letter in there um, to the owner of Mayfield Place uh, in regard to minor modifications of site plan. Um, the uh, zoning enforcement officer uh, issued a stop work order on August 25th due to um, changes on the plan that she picked up during a site visit. Um, uh, issued a stop work order. Um, I met with the the owner uh, and the engineer on Tuesday um, to see what the changes were um, and uh, invoked um, section 9.10.7 which basically says that um, when minor changes to an approved site plan or request which do not require additional parking spaces are limited to minor alterations of existing additional parking spaces or are limited to minor alterations of existing buildings or sites and which do not impact on the approved landscaping and which do not alter driveway access to the site approval may be granted by the director of planning in consultation with relevant relevant departments i did consult with the town with the assistant town engineer um, regarding the uh, impervious surface which um, the calculations for that or the um, the requirements for that had not changed and I also conferred with the um, Shaker Pines Fire Department and um, there was no issues with site access for fire so seeing that I did sign off on this so to get them back to work I guess we'll go with this now yeah <laughs> I have a question. What, what, what document did you get? Or is this all documented in writing, these changes? That's what this letter is. So Yeah, see, we well, changed. This is your letter, not their letter. Correct. Right. It's my letter. So they must have sent you a letter. Yes. Documenting all these changes. Yes. And I met with them and looked at the plans. But then they send new plans? We, have, no. we do have plans, yes. Correct. Oh, ones, plans? Well, this is the thing. When... We had all these issues before. We, and Rachel can attest to this, we basically said no minor modifications. Everything had to get brought back to the board to, so that we knew what was going on because nobody could determine what minor was. Now, I might think this isn't minor. You think it's minor. She might, so it got brought back to the board so that we could determine because we had all the issues with the berm and all of those issues that was landscaping but they didn't want to call it landscaping they wanted to use another terminology so everything came back okay I don't know how everybody else feels and well, this there's been several changes I just earlier the uh, the mail building was reduced to 720 square feet from a thousand it was also moved to the south uh-huh I, I those these aren't minor as far as I uh, well, and it's as we not talked earlier, it's not your fault. And, uh, we had changed that any modifications as before you came in, any modifications. But, but the, came in the regulations first. still state. Well, we I know you read the regulations, but we basically had changed had changed the procedure on them uh, just to avoid such things as crack and, and some of some of this and so that not one person when if something went wrong or is called you called on it gets blamed for it and we don't but, really have the opportunity this is three pages to read I mean to really read and absorb it and you know uh -huh. and to know what exactly what was changed right. on it and yeah. it's not uh -huh. just one or two things I mean it's 
Well, you three have pages. a storm drain change. I, I don't know if that changes the... Well, uh, that's why it was went to the assistant town engineer here. for calculations. But... Do you... It, I mean, I personally... Do you have all the emails and memos from the, from these people? That yes. Do? Well, but do we don't... You I mean, trail, this you? is the whole point of... I, myself asked for a step to be changed. I had to go through that same process and my time period expired. And then I, I myself lost out on something because I was following the same procedures that everybody else was following at the time. And now we have something big and I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming that Courtney knew that Rachel was was not doing these minor modifications because I brought some stuff up to her. That that was the problem that I saw. I personally saw that we needed to define what minor was because I thought adding three steps was minor, but I was told take it wasn't. Up. We can take that up as a let's do as a discussion to make yep. that definition more concrete. Right. But what do we do about this? We followed it's the regulations like it's, it's done, done already. Deal, yeah. you know. uh, because again, the apartment building footprint went from 10,280 to 10,742, and the building legs increased six feet. And the location changed. The and the location changed. And that certainly is no explanation minor. why. Or in your opinion, it's not minor. In mine, it is minor. Well, well that's where our issue that's is. That's where our issue was. All right. Well, in fact, in their mind, the, the berms weren't an issue, but in some other people's well, they, mind, they the were. berms were. I, I, we're not going to win the battle. I didn't think there were administrative uh, This board approvals. is appointed because no, they're supposed to represent the people, and hopefully they right. do. Right. That's an administrative approval, and technically. Is, this, yes. is what he did basically an administrative yes. approval? Yes. yes. And we I said, thought in the past that most times before an administrative approval was done, it was always brought always to brought us here. first yes, saying, I want to administratively yes. approve this. If you read the, if you read the section 9.10.7. We haven't had 10. done that 7. in years. You, you could have broke it, but it hasn't been an operation for a long, long time. Okay. Well, uh, you, you, you weren't aware I, of it. I'm going to invoke it until it's changed. Okay. All right. Put it on the agenda for the next this meeting. meeting. Okay. I'll do. So that that goes okay. under. Uh, uh, let's see. That would be under Thank the same you, Corey, other business. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be under other business item B. Um, is that where we put bylaws? Okay. Is that where bylaws are? We put bylaws there? there too. Okay, because I put it over. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Anything else? No, okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. Let's get back here. At this point of the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that's already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the uh, Commission may be pending. Is there anyone that would like to address the Commission at this point? Please come forward, sir, and give your name and address for the record. My name is Roger Alsbo. I live at 22 Russell Street. Um, I just made a couple of notes about some of the things you've had under consideration. Um, I understand Peter's position about making a determination under the current regulations. My recommendation to you would be to call for a public hearing immediately, as quickly as it can be done. 
and add whatever you need to amend to that section on Asian approval. If you feel it's not work, it's your final decision. The process, however, is doing it through a public meeting and changing it or amending it, addressing it in whatever fashion. That's your route. Um, as far as appointing CEOs, that's your authority. That's your right, statutory, ultimate. You do what you feel you need to do. As far as signs go, I know it was issue an issue when I was still here. I know that the attorneys have been involved and in, in, and and when a previous zoning officer was here that it was a question about whether or not you could actually appropriate people's signs. My belief is that the ruling law, and your regulations are law, is that nobody can put anything in the right of way without your approval. Therefore, you have the right. You may have to deal with storing them properly and not damaging them and making sure that they're returned to the owners, but you have the authority to do it as far as I as far as I am aware. And as far as state rights away are concerned, you do have authority to um, enforce your regulations because the state requires the DOT to have regulations, internal regulations, and those regula internal regulations state specifically that anything proposed for a right-of-way must come to them, and anything that comes to them must comply with the abutting zoning regulations. That's where you come into it. Um, Laura, you had mentioned something about a condition of approval, the buffer? I'm not quite sure. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but it, I would I would think that you should uh, you should approach that through the conditions of approval. It doesn't be. I, I don't know where mowing did or did not approve uh, uh, appear within the conditions of approval, but I believe that's the avenue that you should begin your inquiries through because you do have authority to enforce through conditions of approval. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank yes. you. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Anyone else? Please come forward. Again, name and address for the, re for the record. Good evening. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, I have two small, short items. Um, the house that burned on Church Street, it's been more than six months. I believe it's in a non-conforming zone. Uh, they haven't started doing anything, and I'm hoping someone's keeping an eye, either through your staff or, or the town staff, that they're not going to be able to rebuild that house in a non-conforming uh, zone. Um, and that's 3.4%. 0.4 non-conforming uses a building or structure containing a non-conforming use which is damaged or destroyed by fire explosion or natural disaster may be reconstructed repaired or rebuilt only to its previous floor area cubicle content or exterior appearance appearance provided such reconstruction or rebuilding is commenced within six months of damage it was near Christmas just before Christmas that it happened it's been almost nine months um, the second item is September 27th for everybody that's out there that might be interested. The Source to Sea cleanup will be happening. Um, show up at the Barnes boat launch between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Anyone else would like to address the commission at this time? Last call to address the commission at this time. Moving on to correspondence. Uh, Peter gave you two items that we had in your packets. Uh, again, you had had the magazine. You have a report on uh, Ellington's Planning and Zoning Commission on its uh, plan of uh, uh, conservation development. Uh, 
You'll notice uh, Newington proposed zoning amendments pertaining to signs, so I guess they're having sign problems as well. Uh, we are listed as uh, zoning amendments uh, solar energy systems. But uh, this must be an old one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because uh, that's the one we turned down. If that's the one we turned down, unless yeah. we have another one coming in. Which one are you referring to? Uh, Greg reference uh, received in our office the 15th, and it's uh, reference number Z2014-68. Okay. You're saying that's old? I yeah. have no idea. I would, well, uh, otherwise, I didn't know it was on the agenda coming up. I would assume that that, they, I know they were to have vacations like we were on vacation, and they were maybe catching up. I'll follow up on that. Because there shouldn't be another application that I know of. Not that I'm not aware of it either, so I will follow up. I think I think that's just uh, the one that we did have. You also have uh, the Thompsonville Village District, and that's Z 2014-74, and that that date sent was 7:31. So, and I date sent on that other one was 7. 20, oh, I'm sorry. The other Enfield one was 617, so that's got to be the old one. They're just late in getting the announcement out. Yeah. Uh, you notice Cromwell was talking about uh, residential multifamily development changes too, which is something that we have already done. But it's interesting to see what the other towns are what the other towns are doing. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Are we going to have some discussions about uh, single solar panels in yards that are or rotating ones? I thought we were going to discuss that at one point. Is that possibly what this is about? I don't know. No, not that one. Uh, because we overlooked it in an in the initial writing of our laws about solar panels. The ZEO was working on that. And I don't know if well, was, I don't recall. The height was, was too on. high. That's all they did. They they made them lower the height. But other than that, we don't have anything written about that type of unit. I, I don't know anything about the zoning I, regs. Uh. Okay, because I was going to say, I was always under the impression if it wasn't in our regs, it was not allowed. That's what I told, yes. If well, it's not in the regulations, I, I, I do remember telling the CEO that because she asked me a question, and it was always told to us by Jose that it is not in the regulations, it's not allowed. And, in fact, a couple of times, if you recall, he advised us not to put certain things in the regulations okay. because of that fact. So... <laughs> Maybe if we're going to be reviewing that at the next meeting, that would be something to, good to add in in writing. Oh. Well, I don't know. We, uh, when we get into discussions of that type, we should have. It, it, uh, it literally uh, came from the town attorney, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's from the town, it's from the it's town not attorney. Because Kevin told us many times if it's not in our regulations, it's then it's not allowed. It was, then everybody would do anything they want. The, and then every, they do everything that they want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in that case, we've got an outstanding violation going there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. On Raffia Road. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is what she asked me, and I told her that's, and I think we just had something recently from the town attorney that really stated that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in one of our legal opinions from recent. I don't have them with me tonight, but I would be able we'll to look find it, it. Okay. Thank you. I guess, in, are we in our correspondence? Yep. Okay, the only thing I wanted to mention was that I had, over the summer, um, noticed a bunch of violations, sent out a couple emails. Al sent out a bunch of emails. We requested them to be in our correspondence section so that way we can track them um, so we would know that they didn't get disappeared. And... Um, 
but they disappeared. <laughs> They're not in our correspondence. <laughs> so. Well, that's what we were talking about yes. before, is correspondence. And then, because then, there is a bunch of things that we have perpetual that we've mentioned, but we don't know what the status is. So, um, okay, so, um, and they didn't disappear. I actually have the emails. Um, but in relation to that, again, you know, we, we have uh, our um, focus right now is getting, you know, the business done. Uh, that, you know, getting, getting applicants through and, and getting business done. So that is really our focus right now. If you, you feel that, you know, you need to have these emails, um, that's something that, that we can discuss. But honestly, I mean, we, we, you know, we're doing the best that we can to get the business through the process and get people, um, you know their their uh, their permits and and get work accomplished. Right, but these are more blight and sign violations. Are the well, bulk they're of zoning them. violations. Zoning. Period, which is blight, blight yeah. and. So that they they're they are important because they're giving the appearance to the town that they, away with any that they can left. do anything that they want. So we have to have a balance. And when I start to hear in the general public that. Well, why should we follow any of the sign regulations? There's signs all over town, and it's true. I mean, I mean, I drove down one road and I found a whole bunch of them. But if we don't do anything, this is—it's just making our town look junky. Right. So, okay. So again, um, Courtney directs the ZEO's work. We will follow up with her and make sure the work is getting done. Well, that's not what the regulations say. The, the, again, she works under our direction. Well, it's right there. It's in black and white. I mean, this is the problem. We went from having a CEO doing, doing some stuff, things, right, yeah. now to having a CEO that's not doing anything. That Who also has been added blight. Which is part of zoning, really. But that. So it's like a ba it's a balance, you know. I mean, if we don't say anything, yeah, then no, what happens? <laughs> Nothing. It's been it's been going on quite a while. Let's move on. We've got people. Uh, I have uh, some correspondence. Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, Signs, Monroe Muffler, Freshwater Boulevard. I think I brought this up at least three times. Yeah. <laughs> There's an A-frame sign at the entrance to their driveway that's been there for at least three or four months. Monroe. And it's still there. Muffler. Should have been gone long ago. Uh, also, I think I talked to you, Peter, about you know, when I sign off on drawings, uh, Rachel had instituted a uh, policy of developing a letter stating that uh, all the conditions that needed to be met prior to signing had been met and if there were any issues she brought them to light in that memo and this all came about because of the quick school and the fact that i signed drawings that didn't meet what was approved um, so that was the way of addressing that issue that That's somebody's right. going to review those drawings and tell us that everything is okay they do meet what was approved and there have been no changes, or if there have been changes, then maybe we need to come back here for further approval. <clears throat> so I, I need to have that letter for all, all future uh, approvals or signings. And That's why I'm, we changed the procedure, as I told you. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here listening to you guys, and, and, and I'm not saying it's your fault. I don't have enough to keep staff to do this, enough staff to do that, or secretary and all this. I think this issue needs to be brought to the manager and to the council for the fact that things are going to pot here and we don't have enough staff. It used to be we had staff, they took it all away and now things are going to hell. And I think that needs to be made clear to the powers to be that control the budgets. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay.
Not from my end. Uh, well, if Al were here, you'd hear some yeah, more. Yeah, you would hear some more if Al was here. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, it, it's, I can give you others, and there's no sense in doing it. Uh, there's driveways and gravel paths and things that, that shouldn't be there. I've asked to pull the plans and take a look at them and see if they're there. They haven't been done or I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, there's violations all over out there. And again, we're getting the idea that it's an easy hit, go in and do anything you want. And that's one reason, as Peter just brought up, we changed the procedure. If I didn't know that that was there, we were sure would have changed that at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we did change the procedure. Okay, that's getting us nowhere, apparently. Uh, bond releases, I don't see, I see this request here yep. before, and there's no certification anywhere Nothing. in my packets. Mine neither. Do you have any certification from anybody? Certification for the, the release. release of the bond. Then investigation. We usually have photographs Somebody and goes everything out. goes with them. Right. Uh, there, yes. Um, and then John signs off on it, or they say that all. Right. The so the first one, which is PH twenty three seventy nine. Right. Mm -hmm. We have nothing. There's nothing in your books. Nope. Nothing on Kibu town. The yeah. book does say he recommends approval. But I, mine is blank. Mm -hmm. like, I, All right, yeah, I see that. You don't have, it's not in there. So what I have. Is, uh, I, well, again, we got into an argument whether we accept it, we were accepting emails. That one, I, I guess the that's next what's, oh, okay. there, that's in there. 2379. This is a request. Okay. But there's no certification, uh, I don't know, from the planner. But we don't have anything. Usually, and who would certify? Well, whoever's got it, I don't know. It, it's. I mean, we have somebody that usually reads the plans, goes out, says way. there's that. If it's like shrubs, they go and they make sure that they, they, count, they, put, count, they the, count the shrubs, they take the photos, they make sure that they match to the plan. <clears throat> and then we are... The required diameters and, met the... Right, the uh, diameter. Type, right. They, they even so check, like if it says two blueberry they, bushes, that they're two blueberry Sometimes they bushes. go back to the construction person that's building them and say, can you give us the landscaping sheet of the plants you ordered so we made sure that they complied, they were all in there. Because if we require, let's say, a 24-inch whatever, and they put sure in an they 18, we got to wait for it to 24 <laughs> till we release the bond. <laughs> and and okay. most of them are. It also requires a year. But if it's a planting, it requires a year. Year time. Uh, I I don't know. I guess you have John's email. But another another thing though, his. His email is dated Friday, May 16th. Yep. And his, uh, the email from the request is December 4th. Yep, I see that. 2013? Yeah. Or? 2013, yeah. yes. Yeah, 2013. Like so, why such a lapse to get this, the guy's money back? It's a good question. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. No, I, I know. That is a good, that's a, a, a long time to respond to an email. I, on one say you, side, they say you want to help people out, and another, another way, I don't know. So, <laughs> I, I guess on this one, it is, uh, so there's nothing from the planner, so, but he does say to release it. That's up to the commission. So you're saying that that's up to you. Uh, you what got an email that uh, he says release the. Uh, the uh, she wants to say. Release something. the erosion control bond. Release of the erosion control bond for this subject site is recommended per John Cabebo, assistant release the erosion down engineer. And sediment? Is that, I guess, the sediment too that would be in there. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to release bond 2370, not requ request for release of 
Erosion and Sediment Control Bond for Westfield Corporation, property located at 9 Hazard Avenue. As, it, as uh, uh, stated as in As stated in a memo from John Cabibbo, dated May, May 16th, 2014. Okay. Second. Now, usually it's double stated in there somewhere by somebody in the town that this uh, agenda figure is right because we've also found times that mm -hmm. there's been a discrepancy. So I don't know if we should, you didn't put in a price, uh, a dollar amount, did you? Don't, don't do it. I'm going to recommend you don't. I didn't don't. do it. Yeah, I didn't. Usually we give a price, but I don't know if this one's correct. That's why we usually get a note from the planner. Planner, okay. okay. Uh, we're, we were unaware of that. So and okay. going so. forward, we will have a note from the planner. So uh, just to say you just release it without a number is, is on the agenda. So do I get a second? The bank, it's 1408. Yeah. And it matches. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, but I still would put the note in. Okay. Yeah. That's what it is in the letter, and that's what it is from the bank. Well, that's feel good. All right. <laughs> Usually, what are you, okay. I did, I'm still waiting for a second. Well, second. I gave a second. Okay. But I don't. Discuss it? Yes. Go ahead. Because they could have requested this, but technically it could have been less for some reason. They might have done this, but the town could have t done ask for less or more so we really need to know exactly what it is because if we give them 140867 and they only that's put up twelve hundred dollars that's fine that's why i left it blank if you if it's if you want to table table it for now we'll get the information that you need and we'll have it ready for the next meeting please do okay so how do we just handle that motion i have it to both to table it <laughs> okay. change the motion, the motion or we'll make another motion well, uh, the table, uh, 2379. Second. Let's, we'll take this off. I, uh, I wanted to go home early. Okay, I don't know. This is, probably do it incorrectly. Can I remove my motion? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. do that. The second. Uh, I'll, re I'll re remove my second. I'll okay. remove my motion okay. to release and make another motion to table. <sighs> On release, PH 2379. Okay, thank you. I'll second that. Uh, All on the table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Charles Dern? Four. Elizabeth Ballard? Four. Peter Falk? Four. Kathleen Sarno? Four. Lori Longy? Four. Nicholas Fakus? Four. Charles Land? Four. It's tabled. Uh, same with the next one. 1547. Would you do the same with the next one? Uh, both bonds are on one. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, this one. I got notes. Different addresses. It shouldn't be both in one. John, Friday, April 26th. These are two bonds here. We got yeah. erosion That's what I bond said. and a and there's sediment a control, control bond. bond. <laughs> and there's a restoration bond. Maybe we should table these two. Site work show. completion and or erosion. Wait a minute. I had notes to myself and now I don't make any notes. Well, he already got a check for $2,500. So it looks like he's already gotten his erosion. Oh no! This is him. This is him paying the town to Enfield. I'm sorry. Okay. Usually we don't get all this stuff. We just get the two letters. Well, yeah, but I and then another seventeen thousand in October of two thousand and twelve. Seventeen thousand five. See, he says the ground cover appears to be established, but nobody. See, John never counted plant uh, plants. He just looks at erosion control and stuff. So we don't know if the plants have been done. Motion table this one too. 
I would say. Well, up above, uh, and, and this is another another thing, uh, on the first sheet, one of two, on John Cabibbo's motion, says, I re-inspected the subject site and found the gates are installed. Have you received the properties properly certified as built as required? And then I see a yes with initials. Well, who's that? It's Barbara. Barbara. I know. I, that's what I figured it must be. But that's not an official way right. to, to, to say, <laughs> say yes, I received them. Yeah, I understand. So going forward, we'll put a letter together so it'll be clear. Well, so from somebody, yeah. It'll be clear I, I, that, that. signs it. That. I mean, well, she did initial it, I, but and I figured it was her, but just to write a yes. Uh, but it doesn't say anywhere where they went out and looked at the shrubs. No. Like, and John no, does not do that. No, he's he's just on the gates. Table. Okay. Make, I'll make a motion to table. Second. SPR 1547. It says ground cover appears to be established. I. It's okay. Both are tabled. Charles okay. Duran. Four. Elizabeth Ballard. Four. Peter Falk. Four. Kathleen Sarno. Four. Lori Longy. Four. Nicholas Fakus. Four. Charles Land. Four. Okay. Uh, on this next one, we have, and, and uh, Courtney's here so she can help me. Uh, XZA 1402, Checks Change Amendment Zoning Regulations, is a uh, public hearing which we will have to open because it's on the list as a public hearing. But uh, we were advised by the town attorney because we wish to discuss this further and not in a public hearing. Uh, I'm not not in a hearing time when we have other applications, but in a planning time because we s seem to still have some problems with this. Uh, that the town attorney recommended we move it to a planning session. Yes. He, he recommended that you close the public hearing. Right. We discuss it in a workshop, workshop. format. Okay. It does not require you to reopening to reopen the hearing, though. Once the the purpose of a hearing is to solicit public information, right. which has been done. Right. So now we, you as a commission and we as staff, can discuss everything that's been discussed and your issues going forward, and then we can move forward from there. Okay, but okay. what if we? Well, we then then when we change it, we have to bring it back to the public anyway. Oh, okay. No. So then we will. Okay, no. said that you don't have to, but you're, you don't you have can. to. That but, you but, can. Okay. But you don't have to. Well, you're not we always bound. have. I, I, no, no, no. We got enough problems. Well, bring it. No, no, no. I'm, I, I would not close this public hearing if we're going to a workshop and then we're going to do discuss everything no and not let the public have <laughs> no a say way. again. I, I wouldn't vote for it. No. That's that's okay, yeah, but that's what the options are. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no options to that. Okay. So, uh, if you will then uh, take the roll for public hearing 1402. There is no legal notice to read. If you take the roll, please. Charles Here. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Peter Falk. Here. Kathleen Sarno. Here. Lori Longy. Here. Nicholas Fakus. Here. Charles Land. Here. This is XZ 1402, text to change amendment to zoning regulations, establish a new zoning district, Thompsonville Village Residential, to establish standards for lots and uses in that district, Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission, our applicants. Anyone in the audience would like to address the commission on this item? Anyone wants to address the commission on this item? Last call to it. Well, yes, hand. sir, please yeah. come forward. <clears throat> Roger Allsbo, 22 Russell Street. I'm sorry, I thought there would be a sign-up sheet. <coughs> no, sir, we've had okay. uh, about, uh, there's been a public hearing that was held by Rachel uh, prior to give information, and there's been several other information meetings, and we've also had several public hearings, and the intent tonight was that the council, uh, commission had several problems with it, and we're, we're going to a public work session but it's a work session okay 
I'm not trying to <laughs> dictate that wanna, there should be. Just I just thought, other, I thought, just thought no, there would be. we don't want to put other applicants through okay. sitting here listening to us okay. argue over one item. All right. Good evening. As I said, my name is Roger Alsbaugh, and I live at 22 Russell Street. I am not here tonight as a Thompsonville Fire District Number 2 Board Commissioner, nor as a member of the concerned taxpayers of Thompsonville Fire District. I am here as a property owner and a resident of the village. Although I represent myself this evening, it is important to make it known that my concerns are, I believe, in alignment with those two other groups. The following statements are of my own interpretation. The fire district can be said to have two main directives, to protect and defend the people and structures of Excuse the district. Excuse me, Roger, uh, has this got to do with the tax change amendment? Yes, it does. Yes, okay. it does. Well, it is all part and parcel of that, but precisely. Okay. It's merely my opening statements. <clears throat> the fire district can be said to have two main directives, to protect and defend the people and structures of the district, and to monitor, to, to monitor and sustain the assets of the district at all levels of government. The CTTFD had the main objective re of re reacquiring the vote, which it has done. The many people in that organization feel it is important to remain, remain an effective action group. My specific comments are, A, the term multifamily residences. In any section where these amendments continues to codify and strengthen the concept of multifamily residences, three plus within the Thompsonville Fire District, Without addressing the additional time and costs of yearly inspection requirements that do exist and will expand with the encouragement of structures with more than two families. While encouraging profit takers to invest in the district, it is an unfair additional burden on the taxpayers. With no disrespect to Mr. Bryanton, he has publicly stated that he is a developer and not a planner. Developers mainly work to maximize the most return on investment in <coughs> land. Planners, on the other hand, do or should balance the concerns and interests of the people with the former. I find it revealing that the professional standard of planning before development has been reversed in the town of Enfield. B, section 4-10 area and bulk requirements. One, this section proposes a minimum of 8,500 square feet for legal lots, yet the commission wishes to allow itself the authority to waive the minimum to other stated square footage. I find no reason the Commission should allow such waivers or perform such waivers. I would recommend that they keep a reasonable single minimum, i.e. 5,000 square feet, so, since so many already exist and state in the regulations that it cannot be waived, and stop clouding the issue with unnecessary options with potential for abuse. Two. Also proposed under area in bulk is a maximum coverage of 85%, all of which may be impervious. Unless the town is planning to extremely expand its stormwater drainage capacity in the village, I can foresee increased flooding problems in sections of town where many people already have basement flooding lines. Flooding issues. Not to mention the hulking structures allowed higher and closer to property lines. There are more than enough stress factors in the town in the village the town continues to ignore without increasing them in this manner. C, section 4.30.3.A, point Roman numeral 4, parking standards. There is a reference to section 10.10.5 .10 which allows the consideration of on-street parking, parking for any proposed new structures or units. This is absurd to the extreme. It is already apparent that parking on the streets is and will continue to be a severe issue. Not only does this impact residents in the winter, it affects the flow of traffic in general. In addition, neither this commission nor the town keeps records of who parks in town lots, nor is it restricted to residents. Therefore, this commission has no true knowledge of what spaces exist, what are spoken for in past approvals, or how future approvals may affect the supply. It is imperative to remove the consideration of on-street parking as a source of required parking standards. If a property cannot provide the minimum parking spaces on site and their allowed locations, or the town cannot provide an accurate and reliable system of use for town parking lots, no approval for expansion should be allowed and no waivers granted. D, section 4.10.5C, 
This section says in part that applicants are encouraged to conform as closely as possible to the Thompsonville design standards. At minimum, stronger wording and policies, policies should be in place sooner than later. As existing, as well as potentially restored architectural elements are a proven asset to the town and the district slash village, I can see no reason not to insist that, the, it, not to insist that they are protected and restored. E, I have noted that all references to owner-occupied conditions for approval have been removed from the proposed regulations. This may have been a legal issue, but there should certainly be some reference to the encouragement of owner occupancy, perhaps by a two-tiered incentive program that re rewards owner-occupied at twice the level of non-owner-occupied proposal. The town will have to fulfill many current commitments to the village as well as invest in additional ones before I am certain either I or any other, uh, other residents and any concerned property owners will agree to the diminishments to the already impacted quality of life issues that have plagued us for decades. Thank you. Do you have copies of that for us? Pardon me? Would you have copies of that for us, please? Uh, I, I have. Uh, one double-sided copy, or Peter, if you want, two-sided two single. Please, and Peter, will you make sure we get them for our work? work you want uh, a double or a single sheet? And uh, <coughs> if you would, make uh, you get the date to attend our, uh, our work session. Yeah. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Any, I'm sorry. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Yes. Yeah. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street, but I own a property at 1921 Russell Street, um, which isn't in this specific zone, but I'm understanding that my zone's next. <laughs> um, so the question I looking at this stuff and and I didn't have all the detail I haven't watched all the meetings and I'm not sure what this new square footage is going to be and all that stuff but because um, Roger said something about 8,000 square feet I thought I had heard 5,000 square feet in one of the meetings um, 4,500 I think was the smallest okay that's what we've gotten down to that's yeah. some that's, of the so footage that's, is a that's reason some of the everybody's bringing being brought down to the 4,500 then okay so um I was thinking it was 5,000, so I went through and I kind of looked, and I thought this was in one of Rachel's presentations, but I couldn't find any of the presentations online either. So, um, well, I don't know there's if about the online ones are up to date. They uh, weren't. I didn't see them online myself. Yeah. So I figured there's about 80, somewhere in the vicinity of 85% of the lots in that zone that you're des describing here in 14-03 um, are oversized lots so if 4,500 or 5,000 square feet are going to be required when the assessor goes in comes around and says okay you only need 5,000 square feet for this lot what's going to happen to all those properties that have 10,000 square feet you know they have 8,500 square feet you know are they going to be now assessed for excess land that they really, you know, didn't gain any more land, but are they going to be charged more? Because a lot is a lot. A, an approved lot starts at a certain number, and then any additional land adds to that assessment. So are we creating land here for the town? Is that is that what we're trying to do? And has any study been done to see what the financial effect is? like? Everybody knows the people in Thompsonville cannot afford to pay, and I did do a per lot, a per acre, um, based on a few lots I checked. Um, 90 Church Street has 0.05 acres. Their assessment is $19,320, and that comes out to $386,000 an acre. But as the lots get bigger, the value per acre goes down. So that tends me to believe, and it's gonna be confusing to understand, but you start at a number and then you add the excess. So at 78 Church Street, which has a half an acre, they're assessed at only 
thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand five hundred eighty um, dollars, but their per acre price comes to sixty-nine thousand seven hundred sixty-three. So the disparity between a value of a lot and a value of a lot changes as the size changes and possibly the quality of the change. I don't know how the assessor does their work, but I am assuming I've never been able to come up with a valid number because if I go over to, say, Southview over in Hazerville, a 0.21 acre lot, it comes out to $180,944 per acre. So to me, an acre should be an acre, but it's not. So how are, we, how are these changes going to affect the property values? That's my question. Thank you. Do they, Karen's right. What they do at the assessor's department is that they take your base lot, and anything that's not in the base is assessed at excess acres. So you get a different value for the extra lot. So I did not look at it that way, but... What we do here, the assessment office could totally change the tax formation for Thompsonville based on that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yes. Hmm. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Please, sir, come forward. He has a name and address. Steve Cogtella, 2 South River Street. I don't know if I'm premature on this or not, but uh, I believe the zone changes are also going to apply to uh, uh, North and South River Street along the river, so I'd like to address Sometime, it. eventually, yeah. but we're not into that. And so would I be premature at this point in speaking about that? Yes, you would at this point, right. Okay, yeah. I'll hold off yeah. until next time. Until Right, until we get to that section. All right, thank you. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. Erlene Proventure, 94 South River Street. Um, I'm not really prepared for this. Uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, we're the other section of Thompsonville that's right going to be targeted to come, yeah. in the future. Uh, I wasn't too concerned because this was affecting North Thompsonville area. But I hope that last night's shooting and I hate to say this, but I hope it's a wake-up call to the town of Enfield that I don't think we need more housing concentration down in Thompsonville. We need businesses. We need businesses to build up our tax base, not incentive housing. Uh, I think you're just going to be creating um, an overpopulated that Thompsonville cannot handle what it has right now. That's all I have to say. Thank and you, I ma might be speaking again uh, when you target the other side of Thompsonville. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else like to address the commission? Anyone else would like to address the commission? Last call to address the commission, and you said close the public hearing. But uh, if we, so if I want to just be clear, <laughs> we close it, we can open it back up, but we start all fresh with new notifications and stuff. Because no, no, no. Well, publish publications. You're not going to make out new mailings. No, you know, but I just want to make sure that we understand that closing the pub because their view was closing the public hearing and not opening it back up. No, that's so, an, option, an option, as she said. Okay, so that yeah, that's an option from okay. the attorney. You can reopen it. Yeah, we'll we'll have a new public hearing. A guarantee. Right. Okay, I just want to know no, that I, we'll have it. That's all. Yeah, well, it's up to you. You yes. Well, I know I am only one vote. <laughs> so, yeah, could we just table it? No, because then it's left oh, as wait. an open hearing, and you can't. I got a question. Uh, Are you done? No. All right, before, before I haven't done anything yet. Go ahead, closer. come on. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, if you close the public hearing and you have a work session and you're saying that the public is invited, 
is the public allowed to input I, at that point? If I open it or, to you, yes. No, because it, the public hearing is closed. I so know, is it a that's discussion? That's what I said. During the work session, I usually have always opened it to people that are there. It, it will depend, yes. Okay. So right. we, I just didn't be, know as a legal. It will be up to the commission to invite was, you to talk, and when you know because you have, yeah. we've allowed you to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to any of your work sessions, right. so. But so could we make sure that on the work set we would have a public participation section on it in the work session? Yeah. You don't need to. Well, I'll, Ali is allowed right. to you're offer. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. there. We okay. guarantee you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'm a <laughs> little concerned. Back. I'm a little concerned after Peter said he's going to do this thing until we change it. Book. So no. that's why I want to make sure that we understand what we're doing before we do it. No. Because I don't want to have it come back and say that we screwed up. That's well, all. Well, we can put on the agenda public participation <clears throat> down at the end. I'll, it doesn't make any difference to me put it on that agenda. Sure. They gave us our but option. after we finish, okay. I, I want it at the end after our discussion. Unless it's apropos, I guess, if, so, if it's on. Okay. Because I was very interested in yes. what Roger had right. to say. Me too. And Karen. And I, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll. Peter, would you, just curious on, on what Karen brought up, can you see what, get some reaction from the, uh, from, uh, the assessor's office? Yes, I can do that. Okay, I'll close public hearing XCA 1402. The motion on the table. Is there a motion? Make a motion to close public hearing. Well, I've closed it already. But what's the motion for? So what do we? Well, to move. Do you want to move it to? Uh, to move it to the workshop. A workshop, and, and you don't have a date. Do you have a date? September, uh, October. <laughs> The, sec the second meeting in October. Mm. We left it on a Thursday, yeah. Yes. It would be the 16th. October 16th. I lost my pen. There, take mine. Make a motion to take this discussion to our planning meeting on October 16th. Okay. October 16th. You can keep Motion's made and seconded to uh, have our uh, workshop on October 16th. Charles and usually works up to 7 o'clock. I'm sorry. Roll call. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to, but we will. Go ahead. Charles Durham. Four. Elizabeth Ballard. Four. Peter Falk. Four. Kathleen Sarno. Four. Lori Longy. Four. Nicholas Pecos. Four. Charles Land. Four. Okay. <clears throat> and... Uh, You'll notify the absent commissioners, and well, you'd have to keep us all, just send it out in an email so that it reminds people ahead of time so they can put it in their date book. <sighs> okay, SPR 1347. I'll open, uh, take the roll for, I'm sorry, not, I get the wrong thing here. 1403. XZA 1403, take the roll, please. Charles Duran. For uh, here. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Peter Falk here. Kathleen Sarno. Here. Lori Longy. Here. Nicholas Spakis. Here. Charles Land. Here. Uh, 14, XCA 1403 is the uh, companion to uh, 1402, and all it is is uh, makes the list of streets, which I, I won't read. <laughs> uh, that it, that the More zone streets. change will will uh, affect. Anyone would like to address the commission under this application? Anyone would like to address the commission under this application? Basically, it's uh, Alden Avenue uh, North. Okay, uh, then I will close XZA 1403. Uh, did it here too. You mean the same motion? Yeah. To move it to October 16th? October workshop? 16th planning meeting, yes. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion's made and second to move to uh, October 16th with the planning meeting. Take the roll. Charles Duran. For 
Elizabeth Ballard? Four. Peter Falk? Four. Kathleen Sarno? Four. Lori Longy? Four. Nicholas Pecos? Four. Charles Ladd? Four. Okay, new public hearing. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I see we got 11 and 12 combined here. If you'll read the legal notice, please. <clears throat> the NPO. Uh, okay, right? never mind. No, I was just going to say, Peter, <laughs> would you, when, when we do this new one, I don't need all my old. They get rather confusing. Just okay. what? Just the item we're working from. <laughs> because we have all the old old sheets that we've already changed. All I need is a new. This is the one with the new one, the revised one, the last last revision. When we're doing that. Oh, okay. I, I put mine in the back. Okay, I didn't even realize this. Is that true of everyone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old. I like uh, I like everything in my book, but. Well, once I'm finished with it, I'm finished with it. They'll need to go back. Just okay. Take it out. Are we yeah, going to? Yeah, uh, either way, uh, just throw take it away. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Peter. I'm sorry. Public hearing 2802 special use permit. Take the legal notice, Peter. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings on Thursday, September 4th, 2014, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. Public hearing 2802, special use permit to open a, a group daycare facility at 540 Enfield Street in a BL district, map 33, lot 63. Uh, Shannon Nelson, applicant, Rita Donato, owner. Uh, this legal notice was published in the Journal Enquirer on uh, Saturday, August 23rd, 2014, and Thursday, August 28th, 2014. Uh, roll call, Charles Duran. Here. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Peter Falk here. Kathleen Sarno. Here. Lori Longy. Here. Melissa Pecos. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Is the applicant here? Please come forward. Uh, Peter, I... I I have a question. I don't know if it's for the applicant or for you. Go ahead. On the uh, special use permit application, uh, the applicant is Shannon Nelson. She says she doesn't own, or she doesn't own the property. Uh, so, we need under the application up above on the sheet, it says application form. And it says application from owner. It says it's the applicant. So I don't know. Do you have a letter? The um, owners are right there. Okay. That on the property. It says Mrs. DePace. Applicant Rita okay. Donato, owner. Okay. Right, but yeah. usually they sign something saying. It has that to have. You did. have to there have an affidavit giving her permission. I, I that's all. Him. I just want to make sure. I, I understand. There is a letter. It's there Exhibit is. Four. All right. But I don't think we have Exhibit 4 because exhibit we don't put four. those in anymore. Back and that's why four. I was reading, if you look at the chart, the chart has it that the Different. applicant is the, is the owner. Okay. And, the, and, and her application doesn't say that. Okay. And it doesn't so. say who does own the property. I, I got so you. Evidently, something went wrong up in the office. Okay. That's all right. I just, again, legal coverage. No, it's just supposed to stay on the application. So, so can we start the? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, That's but it, okay. it just make sure we're all right. I want to make a note that um, Rita Donato did sign the paper. All right, he says he has it, but yeah, he what I'm saying is the form that we have states otherwise. It says she's the owner. So somewhere something got mixed, and I wanted to make sure we were legally correct before we started. That's all, because we're held to legal, legalese. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, ma'am. Please go ahead. Um, Shannon Nelson, 3 Dupre Drive in Enfield. Is your mic on? Um, doing a. Oh, okay. Doing a group daycare will be 12 kids maximum. It'll be infants all the way up to um, school age. And right now I do family daycare. I'm just moving it into a building. 
Okay, just for uh, housekeeping, fire says there's no impact uh, at present. Uh, the engineering said he needed more information on the ballards, and I was looking at the ballards, and they look like a toy type of thing. Are they permanent? We're going to just do the backyard. We're not even going to do the side yard fencing. It's just going to be the backyard fencing. So are you playground. changing the, the layout then from what we, we were had? Gonna? We have fencing in the backyard, too, yeah. and in the plans. It just says future on it. So, so it's different than what is. we have here. Can you explain then? Because mm -hmm. on our stuff, it has their the playground, playground on, the on the side, kind of. Yeah, it's out front there should front. be another. There should be another layout. <laughs> there should be this one with the parking lot. I don't think we have that. We're gonna do it in the backyard. Where the park, there's a lot more parking spaces in the back. Because there was some questions about turning around. That yeah, I, I, but they I, didn't I, notice that there was parking in the back. Yeah. Over by of, the garage? Yeah, yes. by the garages. There wasn't right. on the people. I, oh How boy. come we don't have that? I don't have it either. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. This was a copy of something that I was supposed to be on there. I, I don't have it in my packet either. Wait a minute. I know, I only have this one. Because I actually yeah. knew that there were par there was parking yeah. in the back. Yeah, I went down through there, uh, and I was looking because the one we have is the playground's going to be in the front. Yeah, and I changed we changed it in the back area so it'd be safer with the kids. Where so so did that. you give that to anybody at the town? I talked to Barbara, and she said she had a copy of this in the file. Cause it was this one, I think. We didn't have that one. So obviously, I don't think she looked. And, and then you guys also, have, you should have this one too. Do you have an extra copy of that? You guys can, I can yeah, take, you that, guys can uh, take this Yeah, but Peter, one this means that the uh, traffic, well, yeah, the engineer has to look at it, the traffic safety officer, yeah, and yes, the fire absolutely. department. It has to go all over again. Right. That one five, I think we had, but we didn't yeah, have that. Because there were some things I was. Okay. Because, hold on, let's see. Because there was some. Ballards are only on the side near the Chinese restaurant. Park, park, playground is not close to the sidewalk. It meets right up to the front porch. Right, so that's the, what we were going to do is that Yeah, but see, that's ones. the stuff we still have. Right, now, so this one, none of this is... A, we're going to just do the backyard, the backyard okay. only. Well, we as we a map. Well, I think we have to, because we, we don't have any of the right stuff. We, we, we will have to continue it. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to continue public hearing 2802. I'm sorry. That's okay. Second. Uh, Should we... Uh, uh oh I just want to make sure. Well, no, well, let's let's get a second to okay, it and we second. discuss. Okay, discussion. I just didn't know if there was anything else that we needed to clear up. So when she comes back, that we're gonna be able uh, to do this. Because I, I just noticed on these this first floor well, plan. Well, she's gonna need engineering, fire, right. and police all over again. Right. Well, this is an old plan. Right. She's gonna be giving us a new one, right? Yeah. And this, yeah, well, they have, he has the. Because I couldn't read this stuff that was on this. On uh, the conditions, uh, just to add her uh, her own listing. She says her hours are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. I don't. I don't recall. Did you go to an administrative team review meeting on this? For the hours. No, there was. We hold meetings with staff members, police, fire, building. So well, you didn't come to an ART. Okay, so that that's probably where we would start. Okay, because we don't have ART meeting minutes either. So I'm guessing that, <laughs> well, we don't either and we don't either. Yeah, apparently, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a good reason. Oh, what a shame. Well. Sorry, Shannon. Okay. I apologize for. That's okay. <laughs> we'll call you tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. Yep. All right. Thank you.
All right. Uh, the motions on any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, take the roll. Charles Dern? Four. Elizabeth Ballard? Four. Peter Falk? Four. Kathleen Sarno? Four. Four. Longy? Nicholas Fagus? Four. Charles Ladd? Four. The, the other thing I was talking about when, when she had Peter, and I don't know if you have now, just on the side, I'm looking at these bollards, and they said 24 inches by five and a half. Yeah. They're only, that's like a toy that you can put down. They aren't what the engineer was talking yeah. about, I don't think. Can you tell me which one you're refer, referring it's, uh, to? Three it's three. three of three. Three of three. It's uh, from the global. Project. Exhibit 18. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. I, I just couldn't make heads or tails that uh, they they weren't even talking about the same bollards. Is there a reason? What is that? Communication is lacking to, somewhere. Because the bollards are really supposed to prevent a car from going yeah, and these into are, the thing, and this looked yeah. like it was just. Okay, I'm not the only one interpreted it that this way. Yeah. That's where it was. I, I wasn't yeah. sure if they understood the bollards need to be cemented in the ground. And this here Tell didn't look like bonus. that was the same type of yeah. bollard. Yeah, that, that is something that we would cover at, at an ART. I, I'm not sure why this didn't go to an ART, considering the location, hmm. or how yeah how it even how it even got through because this is really something that should have gone to ART. Because uh -huh. there was something on there. There was well, this a just looks like a toy, and I. I I didn't know if there was something I was so well, the, but the way it. the way these typically work this is like a sleeve that goes over either a steel pole or a concrete right, right. pole it's not really a toy it's just a smaller size two feet's not really a big bollard yeah but it says a rubber cap uh, uh, chain slots I just mm -hmm. okay all right I don't know <laughs> all right confusing New public, uh, new business, SPR 1567.3. Is the applicant here? And, uh, oh, all right. Oh. Yep. This yep. Is yep, 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 yep. I know. We can discuss it the next time she comes in, though. Who needs a mic? Oh, right here. Wirelesses are over there. <coughs> More dissatisfied <laughs> customers. He's been here, he knows. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, Dana Steele with J.R. Russo and Associates. I'm here representing uh, Kenneth Lindelin, owner of uh, Kinetic of uh, Connecticut Mulch uh, at property of 36 Mullen Road. Uh, we were here last time in June, I believe it was. Um, we had uh, gone out and done an as-built survey of the property in anticipation of requesting a certificate of occupancy uh, back in May. And um, uh, during the course of, of staff reviewing that as-built, they determined that there was some things that were different on the plan from, from what was on the approved plan. Uh, we felt they were minor in nature and could be approved administratively. Uh, staff uh, wanted to bring it to the commission to make that determination, which you did, and you determined at that time that it could be approved administratively. Um, uh, after the time of our as-built, as uh, Connecticut Mulch went out and constructed and, and did another construction. They constructed a loading ramp, uh, which is uh, south in the southeast portion, um, uh, southeast of the of the covered bin areas, which we've indicated now on on the plan. The reason we found out about it is we went back out to do an updated as built of the berm in the front. You recall that the berm needed to be graded such to address drainage issues. Uh, they, they took a couple of times for them to get it right. We had to, we had to go back several times. When, our, when we went back out in, in, uh, in, in June, to um, middle of June, to update that berm, uh, um, uh, we, 
we discovered uh, that there was this, this other structure in, in the back. So when we submitted the revised as-built with the berm, staff said, we've got, we've got another thing here. So, so we had to apply for another application for a site plan modification. So that's why we're here, um, because uh, the, um, the, the loading ramp, uh, which was uh, constructed, was not on the latest approved site plan. Um, just as in regards, in regard to a little history of, of this site, Back in 2012, you approved a site plan uh, that uh, included uh, uh, buildings and covered bins that different configuration than what they than, than what you approved most recently in 2013. But this is back from 2012. It did show a loading area with a retaining wall, uh, three and a half feet in height, about 100 feet in in, in length. And apparently, what Connecticut mulch. Uh, did is they said, well, we had it approved back in 2012, so we can go ahead and build it. But they built it taller than than the three and a half feet. They built it six feet high, um, and it's a different shape, it's in a different location. So, um, uh, so, so they, um, so we found out about it through the course of our as built of the berm. We happened to see it, so we added it. So, so that's why um, uh, we're, we're we're back here to. Uh, to seek approval for the new location of this, this, this uh, loading ramp. The purpose of the ramp uh, is to allow um, the, um, uh, the, the front, front end loader equipment that, uh, that scoops the, the wood chips out, out of these co covered bins. Going back to the, to the site here. These, this is a, uh, uh, an open, fa open side, it's open on this, uh, this um, eastern face, and, and the truck's going to scoop out the, the, the chips that which are, which are uh, chipped inside the building and the conveyor belt drops them into these, these bins. And they're scooped out, they're loaded into trucks. Um, currently they're loaded um, by, um, fr from the ground level. Uh, the, the lifts it up and, and dumps it into the truck. The problem with that is the, 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 the loader operator can't see into the truck to see how full it is, and so they end up uh, spilling, you know, put, overfilling one part of it, and so yeah. if they get up higher and be able to see down, they can, they can fill it more efficiently. So, so you're so, saying it's not really necessary to have the ramp? Because they can do it from the ground without the ramp. It's it it can be done without the ramp. Okay. Uh, it is it is more efficient to have it with the ramp. They would like to have the ramp. Um, okay. The so I'm just the ramp was part it part, part of the original approval, and, and it's partly my fault because uh, I didn't ask them when we did the new plan. Do you still want this loading ramp? And they were under the impression that it that it was kind of, that it carried over and they could just do it even if it was, if it was different. I explained to them that's not the case, um, but uh, the, um, uh, um, we didn't show a loading ramp on the last plan that I gave you because I didn't know they were gonna build, they were still wanted to build one because they hadn't built it yet. Um, I should have asked them at the time, so this created this. Uh, yes, it's already built, oh yeah. It's there, oh, the ramp's already there. Oh, they, yes. they built it, yeah. Good. They went ahead and, and, and built it. Uh, obviously, so, they've done so without your approval, and so they've done so at their own risk. Uh, so if there's... The second time they've done something like that. Uh, fourth, maybe? I yeah, think, at least. More, you know, it's it's easier to ask forgiveness than approval, I think. <laughs> so after, after doing this Well, times, I don't know that it's easier. Uh, I think this has been <laughs> a, 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 um, a, a lengthy... Uh, a process. I, I think it's been painful for them as well. Um, but I, I don't know. It's a process to me. It her. seems like he just blatantly ignores what our, our rules and regulations are and just does what he wants, and then comes in and asks. Well, if if if, if the ramp does not conform to your rules and regulations, then it will need to be moved. It will need to be removed if it does not conform to regulations. Um, well, well, it doesn't conform to what was. But granted, you said. Yeah, what was you granted? Said they moved it in the height right. we're, 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 at, we're asking you to modify that. So. Um, so then it wasn't built to. It wasn't built to the plant. It wasn't built to the plant. Was it on the plant? No, it was no. not. Okay. So we're, we're asking you to modify the, the plan for a, a, a ramp. Um, 
your, your staff has reviewed it. There's no zoning issues with the location. It's, it's well within the area of, of, of the activity. This is an area where loading uh, uh, would occur anyway. Uh, so nothing's really changing other than that there's the structure. The one, one thing that the uh, uh, building department mentioned, because of the height of it, it would require um, a, uh, a, a, a special approval process through, through the, the building department as well. And one of the things they required was a structural engineer to evaluate it. So we hired a structural engineer to evaluate it and determine that, that it was acceptable. Okay. okay. Do we have that? Yeah, when, when, I hope when they not. decide they got to build. I hope not. I, 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 I think they're, I think they're done. Um, and again, our at least for this month. Our role in this is to is to report to you what is what has happened. We don't. We're not supervising the construction process, but. Um, uh, but 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 we do report to you the the, the facts so that you can. Uh, make an informed decision. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. You want to add anything, Peter? No, I have no opinion because uh, I haven't been to the site and looked at it and really have done nothing with it, so I will leave it in your capable hands. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, there was something I had notes on. No, it's a Conditions from the building department had. Uh, do we have that from your engineer? Or that's what I'm looking for. The structural engineer's report? Yeah. It's in there. It's in there. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, again, why, you got to have reasons for denial. I did, I did review the uh, memo from Rachel Blatt, um, and my only uh, comment on that was number 15 under general conditions referred to a date that um, building permit shall be obtained by July 31st, 2014. I believe that should have been 2015, because that date's already passed. So it would be impossible to get a building permit before that date. I think I think it was just meant to be 2015, and, that, and, and if and if so, we, I have no objection to that. I think. Let's see. Okay, got it. The building is 300 feet from from the property line, and right. and so the, the 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 bins are back another another hundred feet, so about 400 feet. Oh, okay. Pretty far back. And and then this ramp is even further back than that. I, so, okay, so. I was just thinking of noise, because like, so you've done all are they doing this loading at 2 o'clock in the morning? How about if we just make a motion to it? I believe there were hours of operation was all addressed to, with the, the, the previous application, so all, all of those would still be in a, in, so in a force. And again, the loading is going to take place whether the ramp's there or, or not. Oh, right. Here. Two right. different locations. You did that already. No, it's site plan review. SPR. SPR. Motion to approve SPR. 1567.03. Site plan review of a modification. Construct the loading ramp. Property located at 36 Mullen Road in an I-1 district. Map 16, lot 42. Kenneth Lindelin, applicant. Arnell Mullen Road. LLC owner. Uh, per memo dated, where's the memo? July 25th, 
Oh, here it is, July 25th by Rachel Blatt. With 17. 17 conditions. And the fifth condition 15 corrected to be 2015 instead of 14. The date. With the how date, many conditions? Uh, July 25th, 2014. 17. They're all yeah. renumbered. There must be another page. 2015. Yeah. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Unfortunately, going through the book, I can't find a place to deny it, which I would love to do yeah. because he totally ignores, he builds things before we see them. No plans. Uh, <laughs> but there's nothing in here. They, they come back and met the, yeah. met the requirements <coughs> by zoning. So unfortunately, I'll have to vote for it, but I'm not happy about it. Uh, I... I am not voting. I can't vote for it. I have no reason that I can come up with to vote against it. I'm going to abstain because this is the fourth time that this person has come in, built something, and keeps changing it, asking for modifications. Um, which we granted last time. Which we did grant the last time, but I, I can't. On, on this, I, I I can't vote for it. I can't vote against it. I'm I'm just abstaining on this. Anyone else? Call the roll. <clears throat> Charles Duran. Reluctantly for. Elizabeth Ballard. For. Peter Falk. For. Kathleen Sarno. For. Lori Longy. Abstain. Nicholas Vegas. For. Charles Ladd. For. Okay. Hey, thanks. Till the next Thank time. Thank you. <laughs> next time. See you next month. Well, Sorry, gets, Dana. Uh, <laughs> Dana gets the job it's not to, your... to support it. Right yeah. <laughs> okay, SBR 1578.2, site plan modification, 300 Shaker Road. You know, one I-1 district map, lot 99, lot 1, advanced stores, company, applicant, NIP owner, LLC. Second LLC owner. And okay, applicants here. So I recall this is a modification to uh, a loading ramp and a, and a uh, automatic uh, cardboard or dumpster compactor. Correct. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Mark Friend. Makes an eagle and friend, engineers and surveyor. Um, with me tonight also is Kim Kress, and she's from Advanced Stores Company. Um, in case you have any questions in that regard. You need um, a mic. Oh, that's <laughs> all right. For us deaf people. No, for the TV too. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. Oh, very you good. just have to call, call, hold, hold it close. Hold it close. Yep. Um, the application is for um, some simple changes um, to the plan. Um, and a list was provided. But to get you oriented, um, you, I'm sure most of you know where this building is. It's the old Lego distribution center, um, which is outlined here in red. This plan is at a scale of one inch equals 100 feet. Um, this side of the building is a thousand feet long, so it's a, it's the big warehouse on the hill across from uh, the Carl Robinson Correctional Institute. This would be Shaker Road here, which is where the access is into the site. Uh, this road actually continues around to Print Shop Road, but this is the warehouse, and this is where the uh, generally where the changes uh, are being proposed. North would be up. Taylor Road is up here. Um, in this location. So um, the, the changes are on this building.
This plan is at a scale of one inch equals 40 feet, so it zooms into the north end of the building. And I'll go through the list. Um, first of all, the first change requested is in this corner of the building. Uh, when, when Lego had this building, they had two loading dock doors here. One was a two foot high door because they had a special conveyor belt system on the inside. So when the standard four foot truck backed up to it, it stood up two, two feet high inside the building to match the conveyor belt. Um, advanced stores does not need that. They want a regular four foot high uh, dock. So um, that entails cutting the pavement out in this area lowering the pavement down two feet so that we create a, a standard four foot high loading dock in that area. Um, the second change is to cut the asphalt out in a small area uh, located here and put a concrete pad in. Uh, this is in the middle. This is the side where all the loading dock uh, doors are. I think there's 54 loading dock doors and almost dead center in the middle of those doors. Um, they, they are requesting to put a concrete pad in to put a cardboard um, compactor in there so that, you know, waste cardboard produced in the building would come out, be put in this compactor and crushed and, and then pulled away. Um, the next change requested is to remove the concrete pavers at the main front entrance. Right now they're paver bricks and over the years they've become uneven and tripping hazards so um, they're requesting to just take those bricks out and put in a standard concrete walkway in the exact same footprint where the, bri where the bricks are uh, and paint a crosswalk uh, in front of that over to the big parking lot uh, in, in the road. Um, they're requesting to add speed limit signs um, here, here, and here. Um, they're experiencing some issues with vehicles that come through the site and head over to Print Shop Road, UPS trucks and, and such. Um, come through there pretty fast at times. So um, they are going to put up three um, 20 mile an hour speed limit signs, one on each side of the crosswalk and one down here as vehicles come in. Um, they want to add a small sign here just to direct truck traffic into the loading dock area so that trucks come up know that they pull into the loading dock area. It's just a directional sign. Mark, they used to have gates there. They took them out then and said... No, there's new gates here. In fact, this commission approved within the last two years, an additional parking lot here, which is constructed, and there are gates here. I was wondering why the cut-throughs then, because I thought... Oh, the, the cut-through this way? Yeah. Yeah, there, there were gates down um, here originally when Lego had it. Oh, okay. Um, but they're not utilizing those anymore, so there's no obstructions around the whole thing. Okay. Um, and the final uh, request is to... In, in this area here, which is, it's open to the sky. There are columns here. It's kind of an enclosed employee break area. That's what it's used for. And they want to put a, a 20 foot by 20 foot canopy to keep sure. employees out of the elements if they're out there when it's raining or snowing. So those are the requests. They're fairly simple in nature. If you have any nice. questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. I was curious about the uh, 25 mile an hour speed sign. Uh, 20, I think they. I think whatever it is, it's kind of meaningless. Uh, <laughs> people see them and do whatever they want anyway. Yeah, yeah. speed it's, bumps. It's not really enforceable. Yeah. Speed bumps might be more effective at slowing things down. Yeah. I can I can comment on that one. Um, we actually did. Um, that was our original thought was to put in speed bumps. Um, that needed to be approved by the fire department. Yeah. And for their equipment, they denied that request, mm -hmm. but they did support a request to put, and, and I'm just gonna correct Mark a little bit, the signage on either side of the stop walk, we wanted to put a stop sign at, at the crosswalk to, to actually make the cars come to a stop if, or put a yield sign to pedestrians in the crosswalk, one or the other, because it's a, it's a safety concern. Um, our facility is going to be open on Monday for um, normal inbound operations, and, and yeah, we just want to make it safe. Well, it's your, it's your property, really, so you could put a stop sign in there, I would guess, yeah. without... I, 
Yeah, I don't know it's what the It's not a public road. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a public road. Right. Yeah, no, it's it, it's private. So I, I, we weren't sure what the rules were, so I asked Mark Well, to, it would be good to, go to show the signs. Yeah, but. If you put it there, most people will stop. If you put a yield, they're going to probably keep One. going. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, the only thing, uh, the, the fire department supported the modifications. There was nothing from engineering. <coughs> I don't know if they should be on the conditions or not, or I didn't see anything on it. And the police department had, uh, I think, some conditions. Uh, but uh, no, it's good, the modification. Just make sure your stop sign's are big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all. It'd be something that scares UPS, not truck stops anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anything, Peter? No, the only thing I would say about, and I see that you're right, John Cabubo didn't um, address it, but, but Rachel does, and you can see that the lot coverage and the impervious are both way below the required right so. well that's why uh, when Rachel called me uh, whether we, she could approve or not approve us and put it on because I don't know and asked John about impervious surface and I there's nothing here from John so I didn't know mm -hmm. and then I see saw her notes when I got this so maybe she got them from John or she figured it himself I don't know okay, okay. so we uh, but I, I, I honestly don't see any issues with this application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Personally. I'll make a motion to approve. Well, let me oh. close, please. Okay. <laughs> I'll close 1578.02. I don't think it was a public hearing. It was a special oh. site plan? Or was site it a site plan, plan review? review? Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion to approve SPR number 1578.02, site plan modifications at 300 Shaker Road in an I-1 district, Map 99, Lot 11, Advanced Stores Company, Inc., Applicant, NIP, Owner 2, LLC, Owner. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, take the roll. Charles Duran. Four. Elizabeth Ballard. Four. Peter Falk. Four. Kathleen Sarno. Four. Lori Longy. Four. Nicholas Fakus. Four. Charles Ladd. Four. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I haven't seen you for a while, Mark. Thank you. Do we have any scoops here? Uh, Is that Keith? No, I think we're done. Done. Is there we're a, done. There's a gentleman in the back, or did he come Applications with? to be received. Yeah, I know that. I, I just see a gentleman in the back. I didn't know. He's attorney. Okay. Applications to be received. Uh, Twenty-eight oh one. Now I, we talked. To, I talked to you about this beforehand. Is uh, twenty-eight oh one and twenty-eight oh three? Twenty-eight oh one is by itself. That is correct. And then eight oh three and eight oh four are related. Correct. Huh. Okay. And do you are you aware of what are we set up for in the next meeting? Um, no, to tell you the truth, I'm not. Because do we have stuff pushed off to that? Or no? I don't recall. Workshop. Hmm. Is that what the question was? If we have a workshop? No, no, I, I was wondering what was no, on No, no, we don't know what was on the agenda for the next meeting. I, I don't. We don't have it. There's no applications there's nothing as on, yet. on the agenda? Correct. Okay. So what were we doing? We were doing a new schedule. So I'm at the beginning of the month. We, that starts in October. Oh, okay. Okay, well then. Just to wanted to make a note of the of uh, 2801. Um, that's a, uh, an, an application to um, a, a proposal for housing and multifamily housing. Right. At what is 
commonly referred to as Metro North. Oh. We made some zoning changes not too long ago to allow medical uses. Oh, that's the yeah. me is that? And um, it, it goes, the application goes against the plan of, zone, plan of conservation and development. And um, staff's not in favor of it. Just so you know. Right. Okay. Well, you did. Those I hope are in the in the in, in our notes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's why I was looking at because it it just says zoning map change to that, but doesn't say from what. And and it, it is that's all that's industrial on that side of the street. Okay. Yeah, and that's the one we just changed to medical. Yeah. Okay. And all right. So we'll put that on the next meeting. Uh, 2803 and 804 are related. Okay, well, I could go next meeting too, I guess. And, and the beer wine permit. One. I guess all of you could go on. It, it right. should be with no problem. One, two, three, four. That's, um, but then we have this too? A site plan? I thought I had. Wait a minute. Well, they bought it. Yeah, the site plan is is just a, a site plan change of use. That's why okay. For the church, it's uh, that's okay. that's the uh, that sauce. Mm -hmm. It actually, you have a problem if you turn it down anyway, because then you get into that uh, RICO law. Right, so mm. we're on twenty eight. I guess so. Uh, everything. I guess everything can. I guess go everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine with us. Have you had ARTs what we had talked on? about was sorry. Have, have you, you had, had ARTs? ARTs? We have on the church. Um, the other ones have not. Okay. And on the one. Will you be able to get them in? Because if you can't, there's no sense of putting them on the agenda. Right. Um, <laughs> well, we'll leave it to you next couple of days and then if you can get them on the ART put them on the agenda if you yeah. can't put them on the next agenda it's back. available okay what we had talked about Charlie was for the October when we do the new format that we would only hear four at that first meeting and then the second meeting would be the planning type mm -hmm. workshop type of use for y'all <laughs> oh yeah instead of having the separate workshops yeah well depends on what you get in though too or we could do both we could have the additional workshop if that's merited too. So it allows for more planning time, which I think was one of the things that you all were frustrated and we were kind of right. frustrated too. So it allows for that. Yeah. Um, and then on the beer and wine permit, yeah. typically they, there's um, measurements that they take, but if it comes out that it's close, then they have to get it measured by, I don't think that there's any churches, daycares, or, but that's one of the things in the regulations that they measure, but if it's, because the GIS is not as accurate, yeah. that uh, if it's close, then we would request them to have it measured by a surveyor. The regulation goes from yeah. the front door of the, uh, the, the place straight out to the center of the street. How feet? Huh? A thousand? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it goes out the front door, out to the center of the street, and then you measure yeah, there's from a the certain way of, the of measuring it, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is because I have it. Because it's a it's a difficult way. It's like it's not as a crow flies. Yeah. It's as a car would drive, oh. I guess. Because we've gone through that before in a couple of them. I think it was. Uh, yeah, uh, and, okay, here it was. It Separations okay? were a thousand feet. Yes. Okay. I got them. Paper but they measure out the door so and down the streets. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll well, make sure that that's done. No cutting through alleys or anything. Right. <laughs> We're just trying to give you the advance. I don't, know, I don't know where this is, <laughs> but there was somebody there. just mentioned a daycare. Where were you about that one? It's a country diner. Oh, okay. I don't have anything on my There's no September. There is a daycare in um, the plaza up by Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. I only have a bunch of weight to There is a package store in there, you're right. Mm. Oh, the red, red top. Red, red top. top, but I didn't That's think your it was. <laughs> yes, Peter likes the signs. Okay. Uh, okay. There was a difference. 
it was public school, public playground, church. It didn't, we didn't have didn't daycare. daycare. No daycare, okay. 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 I knew there was some little. Church. Uh, I'm church, There's another one in the school, opposite playground. direction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of those middle apply. Middle row. Right. So you might be fine, but sure. that's why I'm just letting oh, you know. Oh, package store. Oh, package. oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the distance between package stores. And that, yeah, funny. that makes a difference. I don't know. All right. What's the school? Okay. Anything else? Not from me. Eli, we need. Second. Motion's made to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take a roll for that. Okay. Yeah.